Debugging and programming is super important and allows you to gain insight as to what's going on inside of your code, especially when things are not happening the way you expect them to. In MATLAB, the uh, way to start doing debugging is to uh, add in breakpoints to specific points in your code. We're going to put the first breakpoint on the first line of the code and then at the F printf statement right here, so lines 4 and 13. The breakpoints are inserted by clicking where you see these dashes and clicking on it uh, to insert a little red dot. Okay, Now, I'm going to press run and that will stop at line 4 before assigning the value to the uh, variable called counter. Um, so right now there are no variables that have been initialized. The next step that I take, if I go step like this, you'll see that counter has now been assigned. If I just wave the cursor over it, it shows that counter has now been assigned a value of 10. If I press continue, it will progress through the for loop until it gets to the next breakpoint. So I hit continue, and it will have executed some code that's in here in the for loop. For instance, counter should be assigned a new value. You see it's no longer 10, it's now 11, because it executed this line. It's now on the fprintf statement, and if I hit the step button like this, it will execute fprintf, and you'll see it appear uh, at the bottom of the screen. There you go, so loop iteration has been printed. I hit the step button again. It goes into the beginning of the for loop, then looks at the first if statement. So if index is less than or equal to two, and it will enter it because index is less than or equal to two. I'll go step. It is now at line nine, this line right here. It will change the value from 11 to 12. So counter has now been uh, updated to be 12. We're now back at the fprintf statement. And if I hit step like this, we're now into our second iteration of the loop. I hit step one more time. And we're back into the beginning of the for loop. We're now on to our third iteration. We take a look at index. Index is now equal to 3. I will go step again. And now we have skipped line 9. It didn't stop at line 9, it skipped it because index is greater than 2. So now we're at the else portion of the statement. We are now at line 11 because index is greater than 2. Counter, which is currently equal to 12, will now be updated if I step one more time. So this line has now been, up, uh, has now been executed. And if we take a look, counter is no longer 12, it's now 11 because we took counter and we subtracted one from it. I will step one more time. Step, we're in loop iteration three. Back to the beginning of the if. We're going to skip line nine, like that. We're going to go back in to the second part of the if else sandwich. We will go to line 11 because that condition is true. Here we go. Counter is currently 11. It will now be updated to be 10. It will be 11 minus one. I go step. We're now at the end of the if else statement. We're at line 12, and counter is now equal to 10. Step, we're into f printf. I'm going to continue. I'm going to hit continue. It will come back to the f printf. It will skip everything, uh, or at least it will execute everything but not stop in the middle of the if else statement. And we've now exited. It says on the display that our counter is equal to 9 because it, the last go around it was 10 minus 1. And our loop iteration ended at 5. So we went 5 iterations through and our counter ended up with a value of 9. Okay, so we now know that at the end of the day the uh, counter was equal to 9.